Madhya Pradesh Tourism, Sound and Light Show at Hindola Mahal, Mandu. Every day after sunset, Indian, 180 rupees, foreigner, 300, that is $3.50. So here you have some of the more impressive of the ruins of the ancient city. So you all, of course, have heard of the Taj Mahal. This is the Jahaj Mahal. So the Taj Mahal is a Muslim monument. These are Muslim ruins, and so that is why the similarity in the names. Okay, ticket counter. So, 300 rupees entrance fee. Hello. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, we have a little information here. The name Taveli is a corrupt form of Tavela which literally means stable. The building was thus a stable block or mansion since its ground floor was used for the stable and the apartments in the two upper stories being meant for the accommodation of the guards. Lovely grounds. Very interesting. To imagine life in this uh, city 400 years ago. <laughs> so, this is a museum with uh, assorted stone carvings. So, this would be Hindu Maheshwara. The name, the uh, time period, 11th century. I mean, this one totally looks Hindu. Anyway, also 11th century. And it is just obvious because the uh, Muslim style is nothing like this. So this all seems to be, yeah, 11th century, 11th century. Female deity, 12th century. Chamunda, 13th century. Ganesha, okay. Brahma. It is not often that you see Brahma statues that I'm aware of. It certainly seems to be less common than the others, such as Ganesha and Hanuman, and Shiva. Hanuman is an incarnation of Shiva. Parikara, 12th century. Wow, incredible. Designs. Ganesha again. So, uh, Varaha, the classic Hindu. Deities. And so here is the Jahaz Mahal, Ship Palace. It is a monument noted for its romantic beauty, standing lengthwise in a narrow strip of land between the water of the Munja and Kapoor tanks. The palace resembles a ship. It was probably built by the pleasure loving Sultan Gyas Uddin. 1469 to 1500 for his large harem. Whoa. <laughs> 
So most people probably already know this, but uh, there is a big difference between the Hindu and Muslim styles of architecture and art and everything. And one of the most basic differences is that the Muslim style is much more stark. And so you don't have the intricate carvings, the detail as in the Hindu palaces, temples, forts, etc. It's much more basic. Yet still quite appealing, nice style of arch. But of course it is a monotheistic religion, first of all. So there is no pantheon, there is only Allah. And you aren't allowed to depict Allah, an image of Allah. So certainly that would be one of the reasons why they found the Hindu religion to be offensive probably or inferior or whatever, you know that uh, they made carvings of their gods and had more than one. The age-old religious conflict and unfortunately it resulted in a lot of violence and destruction throughout India, not only between Muslims and Hindus by any means, also lots of battles between the various Hindu kingdoms. But uh, Mandu here is a clear example of the long history of the Hindu religion and culture existing for nobody even knows the beginnings of Hinduism as we know it today, thousands of years BC. But this land was Hindu and then of course later Buddhist and also Jain, but then the Muslims really conquered and displaced the Hindu culture to a great extent. But the uh, Muslim culture was not without its beauty as well, of course, as you are seeing here. Looks like obviously a fountain, I would assume or like a swimming pool. In its prime, this would have been quite a heavenly place to live. I mean, depending on your circumstances, of course. Whether you were a slave building this place or the king or one of the harem or A soldier fighting the battles. All right, let's uh, get a closer look at that there and see if we can get over to that.
And here you have an ancient Hindu baudi. Never heard of a baudi before, but I guess that just means a well. A uh, water tank, yellow. With an altar. And so this illustrates clearly that uh, the Muslims built their civilization right on top of the Hindus. So it wasn't just a matter of, you know, moving in next door or uh, some sort of a cooperative, like, come on over Muslims and join our party. It was conquering and destroying and eradicating and then building right on top. The Hindola Mahal, with its side walls sloping majestically as if swinging, this palace has been rightly titled as Hindola Mahal or Swinging Palace. It was probably constructed by Gias Uddin, 1469 to 1500, as an audience hall. So, the Muslim architecture being much more just like, boom, big, more squarish, as opposed to the Hindu, like, curves and intricate detail of the temples and the uh, palaces with the ultra-artistic, you know, windows and doors where the entire area around the opening there would be fully covered in, you know, lattice work and here it's much more straightforward yet still very impressive. And yes, we will be seeing more Hindu structures. There are still some major buildings left over from the Hindu civilization. So another Baudi, Champa Baudi Royal Palace, Hammam, Dilawar Khan's Mosque. Man, there is a lot to see here. Another Baudi. So this one, quite different. Whoa. Oh man, you can go inside. Fascinating. So this is totally different from the other one. Whoa! I can hear what is probably bats. Yes. Oh, jeez. Wild. So what exactly is the function of this? A bounty, I've never heard of that. Man, I would not have expected this to be right under the ground. So this style is looking Muslim. The other one it specified was a Hindu bounty. This one definitely appears to be Muslim. So what the heck is it for? Stairs going down. Yeah. Locked gate. Oh man, another whole level. Wild. Namaste, friend. Namaste. How are you, man? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I am video shoot doing here. You're making a video shoot. Here, this is video makeup. Oh, I see. What is your country, friend? Uh, America. American. Very yes, nice. USA. 
Uh, I am coming right now in Puskar. Oh, yes, for the camel, yes. camel fair? Yes, camel, camel fair. fair. I am organizer. I see. Can I ask you one question? Yes. What is a Baudi? What is this place? Uh, this is uh, Jal Mahal. Uh, this is uh, uh, second runnage. Second runnage? Mainly, main Rani uh, have kings one or two or three. Okay. But many women slab types. Uh, this is part of the harem then? Yes, harem, harem. Oh, harem. this is still part of yes. this. I see. Okay, okay. Thank you. So this is where the women lived? So we mentioned Pushkar. Pushkar is one of my favorite places in India where they have the annual Pushkar festival. Pushkar is in Rajasthan. I seriously considered stopping there again, but uh, it was a long ways out of the way from uh, where I was in Rajasthan. The Royal Palace. Okay, looks like here we're going to get some answers. It comprises a number of structural ruins lying in such a confused mass that no idea can now be formed of their original layout or plan. Okay, so even the experts are confused. From the splendor of the ruins, however, it can be said for certain that these were once the luxurious retreats of the sultans of Malwa. Among the ruins is a well called Champa Baudi. So, Baudi does seem to mean well, and a vaulted room known as Takana, which are almost on a level with the water of the Munj Talao. At a short distance from the well is the hammam, or hot bath, okay, in the ceiling of which beautiful stairs were cut for light. From the hammam, one has to pass through the ruins of the palace. The existing remains of the structure show only a pair of hall with vaulted ceilings. Its main facades were built of marble, adorned with panels and medallions of blue and yellow tiles, some of which bear Kufi inscription. So it sounds like it is different phases of construction building on top of each other. Just phenomenal. So I'm biking back into town and wanted to show these pretty paintings. So these are all mandalas, spiritual 
designs, but up ahead is something quite different. I hadn't noticed when I was going the other way that these are all famous places around the world. So that looks like London. I think it's called the Eye, big Ferris wheel, Statue of Liberty, Tower Bridge, London, Ephesus, Turkey. Okay, where is that? I don't know. I mean, that could kind of be a lot of places. Not sure. That, I'm going to guess Saudi Arabia. Arabic. I guess the flag is the clue, but I have no idea what flag that is. Yeah, so Turkish flag. Okay, I'm just noticing the flags on every one. Okay, that's cool. So, at the first one, it actually has the EU flag for some reason, and then it has the British flag for Tower Bridge. Okay, a mosque. Somewhere, not sure of that flag. Japan. Somewhere. What city is that? Oh, Mexican flag. So, probably Mexico City. Oh, okay, there's the Japanese flag. I guess I got that wrong. Because that is obviously Mount Fuji. Okay, not sure of that flag, but maybe... Korean? And then... Colosseum, Rome. I think, uh, Myanmar? India, Statue of Unity. Okay, Spain? France? Hello, goodbye, namaste, fear malenge. One rupees, one rupees. China, Great Wall of China. Brazil. Christ the Redeemer. Canada. Toronto. Sydney, Australia. Okay, what is that waterfall? Venezuelan f flag? I mean, I know there's the uh, big waterfalls in Venezuela. Not sure about that one, but uh, pretty cool. So, I thought that I would tell a quick uh, story of something that happened to me while bicycling the last time that I was here in Mandu, which I hope not to repeat, which is that I broke a rib under very odd circumstances. So I had rented a bicycle, I was biking along somewhere around here, going down kind of a steep hill that, uh, hello, hi, how are you? Okay, say hey. Okay, say hey. Acha, acha. TK. So I was biking down this hill, and then the road came to the bottom of the hill and went up. And I decided I wanted to get speed to get up the hill. And so I went to uh, hit the pedal really hard, and the chain came off. My foot slipped off the pedal, hit the ground, and I managed to stop myself, didn't wreck or anything. Didn't realize that anything was wrong until later when my chest hurt. And then it was the classic broken rib scenario of when you breathe in deep, it hurts. When you laugh, it hurts. I think that I had broken a rib once before as well, so I recognized the symptoms. But it was just odd that it was simply that action of just my foot coming down. Unless it was something else randomly, but that was like the only traumatic event that happened that day, and it was that day that it started to hurt. So anyways, we'll uh, try not to re-experience that. I love Mandav, so Mandav is... Mandu. All right, back at the Jama Masjid. So today is a Saturday. That is why these school groups, I can hear screams inside there. 
sounds like there's another group of kids, so can't really avoid it today, I guess. So, obviously I'm somewhat wrong that uh, it's a little known place here. It is known, but uh, not popular with foreigners. Anyways, Jami Masjid. Construction of this mosque was started by Sultan Hosheng Shah Ghori and completed by Mahmud Shah Kilji in 1454 AD. This is one of the biggest mosques in India. Besides the beautiful jolly work and the painted enamels, the most noteworthy feature here is the fine panorama of domes and arches facing the spacious court inside. The western wall of the colonnade is adorned with beautifully designed niches and a pulpit in Hindu style. Looks like I might be on time, so to speak, as the school group is leaving. Now it's nice and quiet. So this is of course part of the same civilization that built everything else that we've seen so far. Or anyways, most of what we have seen so far in the video. But there you can see those clearly Hindu temples there. Very impressive hall.